Not everything you've been told is as safe as it seems. Some survival tips, passed down through generations or glamorized on TV, can actually be dangerous. Yes, even life-threatening. It's high time we separate fact from fiction and debunk these survival myths because knowing the truth could one day save your life. Myth number 20. Sucking Venom Out Have you ever believed that you can suck venom out of a snake bite? It seems like a quick fix, right? Something you've seen in a movie or read in an adventure novel, but in reality, trying to suck out venom can actually make things worse. Think about it. You can actually spread the venom more and introduce bacteria to the wound. So what should you do then? The best course of action would be to keep the wound clean and seek medical help as soon as possible. Remember, a snake bite is a serious medical emergency that requires professional attention. Myth number 19. Escaping from the bees. Have you ever disturbed a nest of bees and thought jumping into water would make them buzz off? Well, think again. Bees and wasps are relentless creatures, and if they see you as a threat, they won't back down. Jumping into a lake or river won't deter them. In fact, it might make things worse. These insects are protective of their homes, and if you upset them, holding your breath won't cut it. They'll patiently wait for you to surface and resume their attack. And guess what? You'll be stuck in the water this time. So if bees or wasps are hot on your tail, stick to dry land and find some cover. Even better, don't tick them off in the first place. Myth number 18. Frostbite First Aid Imagine you're stranded in freezing temperatures, and frostbite starts creeping in. What do you do? Frostbite occurs when your skin and underlying tissue freeze, starting as a painful red patch and worsening to numbness and grayness. In severe cases, it can lead to tissue death. Scary, right? Most people think rubbing their hands will make them warmer and treat the frostbite. Don't. It'll only make it worse. Instead, gently warm up the frostbitten skin. Hold off on starting a fire or using hot water. Frostbitten skin is sensitive and can easily get burnt. Submerge the affected area in warm water and drink warm liquids to gently warm up your body. If you're still stuck outside, prioritize finding shelter. Otherwise, your skin might refreeze, undoing any progress you've made. Myth number 17. Cactus Cocktails Picture this. You're stranded in the scorching desert, barely surviving and craving water. Then you realize you've heard somewhere and probably even seen in movies how cacti are a reliable source of water. Sorry to burst your bubble, but most cacti actually contain fluids that are unsafe to drink and can actually make you more dehydrated. Trying this forbidden smoothie might even lead to paralysis, if luck isn't on your side. There's just one cactus exception, the fishhook barrel cactus. Its juice can be sipped, but only in tiny amounts, and only in dire emergencies. So if you stumble upon a cactus, don't start hacking into it expecting a refreshing drink. Honestly, it's not worth the risk. Instead, Focus on finding alternative sources of water or carrying sufficient supplies with you. Myth number 16. Priority in a survival situation. Let's talk priorities. When it comes to survival, finding food often gets top billing in people's minds. But here's the thing. It's not actually your first priority. Or at least it shouldn't be. Sure, food is important, but your body can go without it for weeks. But in tough situations and harsh environments, keeping your body temperature stable and finding shelter is way more crucial than finding something to eat. Remember, focus on water, shelter, and keeping warm before filling your belly. Myth number 15. Fire before shelter? In movies, you often see people in the wild cozying up around a big fire. It looks picturesque, but in reality, fire shouldn't be your first concern. Shelter is way more important. Why? Well, one heavy rain or strong gust of wind and poof, your fire is gone. Plus, keeping a fire going requires a lot of energy gathering wood and tending to it. Shelter, on the other hand, provides immediate protection from the elements and a safe place to rest. When building a shelter, focus on creating a raised bed to insulate yourself from the cold ground. Once you have a comfortable place to sleep, then you can consider building a fire. 
Myth number 14. Fire inside a cave. Speaking of fire, it might seem like a perfectly fine idea to build a fire inside a cave. After all, that's what we've always seen in movies, right? Sure, a fire can keep you cozy, but in a cave, it can also lead to suffocation from smoke or even carbon monoxide poisoning. Proper ventilation is crucial if you're thinking of lighting a fire for warmth. So, if you find yourself in a cave while lost in the wilderness, resist the urge to start a fire inside. Heat from the fire can make the rocks in the cave expand, potentially making the structure unstable and causing a collapse. Plus, the smoke will quickly fill up the cave, making it hard to breathe. If you need a fire for warmth or cooking, it's safer to build it just outside the cave. That way, you avoid the risks but still have the shelter of the cave nearby. Myth number 13. The quicksand problem. Quicksand seemed like a big deal in movies, thanks to Indiana Jones and others, but in real life, it's not as dramatic. It won't swallow you whole if you so much as touch it with your pinky toe, but it can still trap you if you're not careful. And that's no joke. So, what is it exactly? Quicksand is basically wet sand that's so soaked with water, it acts more like a liquid than a solid. It can't hold weight well, which is why you might sink into it. Now, here's the important question. If you find yourself stuck in quicksand, should you stay still or try to free yourself? The answer might surprise you. Contrary to what movies teach us, staying still won't help. Waiting for someone to come rescue you with a handy stick only happens in Hollywood. In reality, staying motionless will just keep you stuck. But don't start flailing around like a maniac either. What you should do is lean backward to distribute your weight evenly, and gently rock back and forth to loosen the sand's grip on you. It'll take some time, but it's your best shot at getting out alive. Myth number 12. Eat what animals eat. When you're lost in the wilderness and hunger strikes, figuring out what's safe to eat can be tricky. Choose wisely, and you'll boost your chances of survival. But make the wrong choice, and you could be in for a rough time. Now, you might think it's smart to watch what animals are munching on and follow suit. But here's the truth. Just because an animal eats something doesn't mean it's safe for humans. Animals and humans have totally different diets. For examples, humans love chocolate, but it's toxic to dogs. So don't rely on what animals eat to guide your menu. Instead, there's a better way to find out if something is edible. The Universal Edibility Test. It's pretty straightforward. Start by checking if the plant or berry smells okay. Avoid anything that smells like almonds or pears, as they could contain cyanide. Then, rub a bit on the inside of your elbow and wait 15 minutes. If it starts itching or hurting, throw it away. If not, take a small nibble and chew it for a few minutes. Look out for bitterness, soapy taste, or any tingling or pain. Spit it out if you experience any of those sensations. If not, eat a bit more and wait 8 hours. Yes, 8 hours. Patience is key if you want to be sure it's safe. And remember, just because one part of a plant is edible doesn't mean the whole thing is. So be cautious and test each part separately. Sure, it might sound like a hassle, but it's way better than the alternative, being dead. Myth number 11. Following birds for water. Finding water in the wilderness can be quite difficult. One popular myth suggests that you can locate water by following birds in flight. The idea is that birds flying overhead are heading towards water, so if you follow them, they'll lead you to it. But here's the reality. While some waterfowl do stick close to water, Others fly long distances for various reasons, like migration or finding food. So, relying solely on birds for water guidance might lead you astray. Instead, keep your eyes peeled for ground-dwelling animals. They tend to stick closer to water sources and won't wander as far as birds. It requires patience and a sharp eye, but observing the behavior of animals on the ground can lead you to water more reliably. Myth number 10. Boiling water makes it safe to consume. Picture this. You're stranded in the wilderness, thirsty and desperate for a drink. You come across a stream. But hold on, before you start gulping down water, let's talk about the safety of boiling water. It's a common belief that boiling water makes it safe to drink by killing off harmful pathogens, 
While boiling does indeed kill bacteria and other nasties, it won't remove chemical contaminants or heavy metals lurking in the water. So while boiling can make water safer, it's not a foolproof method for ensuring its purity. If possible, filter the water before boiling it to remove additional impurities. And remember, when in doubt, it's better to err on the side of caution when it comes to drinking water in the wild. Myth number 9. Drinking Urine Now, let's address a survival strategy that's more harmful than helpful. Drinking Urine The myth goes that drinking urine can help you survive without water. But hold on. Here's the reality check. Not only is that disgusting, it's actually not true. Urine contains waste products and can become more concentrated over time, making it harmful to drink, especially in a survival situation. Instead of resorting to drinking urine, prioritize finding shelter, securing water, and maintaining body temperature. So when it comes to survival, think twice about taking a sip of your own pee. Myth number 8. A jellyfish sting. Sticking to the urine theme, what should you do if you're unfortunate enough to get stung by a jellyfish? Here's what not to do. Pee on it. Yes, you heard that right. Despite what you may have heard, urinating on a jellyfish sting won't provide any relief. In fact, it can make the pain worse. The idea behind this myth is that the ammonia in urine could neutralize the venom. But in reality, it does nothing of the sort. Instead, it can activate the stinging cells and exacerbate the pain. So what should you do if you get stung? First, remove any barbs from the area. Then wash it thoroughly with salt water. Peeing on yourself or your friend won't bring any relief. Even popular TV shows like Friends have given wind to this false myth. So it had to be busted. Myth number 7. All brightly colored insects and plants are poisonous. Another myth that must be debunked is one that's been buzzing around for far too long. The belief that all brightly colored insects and plants are poisonous is simply not true. While some creatures and plants use bright colors as warning signals, it is not a universal rule. Many brightly colored organisms are completely harmless, so don't be too quick to judge a book by its cover when it comes to nature's vibrant palette. Instead, Exercise caution and do your research before assuming that a splash of color equals danger. Myth number 6. Clothing in hot weather. When you're out in a scorching hot place like a desert, shedding layers might seem like a good idea to cool off. But in reality, keeping your clothes on is a smarter move. Clothing serves a couple of purposes in the heat. Firstly, it blocks direct sunlight from hitting your skin, which helps prevent overheating and sunburn. Secondly, when you sweat, the moisture gets trapped by your clothes, creating a cooling effect as it evaporates and hydrates your skin. For centuries, people in hot regions like the Middle East have worn long, light, flowing clothing for these reasons. These garments are often white, as white reflects sunlight the best. So, covering up isn't just a fashion choice, it's a practical way to stay cool and protected from the sun's harsh rays. Whether you're in the desert or anywhere else, keeping your clothes on is the way to go. Myth number 5. Using alcohol to warm yourself. When you're freezing cold, reaching for a bottle of whiskey might seem like a quick fix to warm yourself up. After all, alcohol creates a warm sensation in your body, right? Well, not exactly. While alcohol can give you a temporary feeling of warmth by causing your blood vessels to expand and blood to flow to your skin, it actually lowers your core body temperature. This means that despite feeling warm on the outside, you're actually losing heat faster on the inside. Plus, alcohol reduces shivering, which is your body's natural way of generating heat. So if you're stranded in the cold, lay off that bottle of whiskey. Myth number 4. Eating snow for hydration. Many of us have heard the suggestion to eat snow when we're thirsty. But hold on a second. While it does make some sense, after all, snow is frozen water, ingesting it directly can actually lower your body temperature and increase your risk of hypothermia, especially if you're already cold. Additionally, snow requires your body to expend extra energy to melt it, leaving you more dehydrated in the process. So instead of munching on snowflakes, it's safer to melt the snow first before drinking it. Don't make your organs work overtime, 
They're already doing enough for you. Myth number three, Moss for direction. In the past, before smartphones made navigation a breeze, humans had to rely on different methods to find their way. One persistent myth suggested that moss could act as a natural compass, as it supposedly only grew on the north side of trees. But that's far from the truth. While moss does tend to grow more on the north-facing side of trees and rocks in the northern hemisphere, and on the south side in the southern hemisphere, it's not a reliable indicator. Moss can grow on any side, depending on various factors. So don't count on it for navigation. Myth number two, myths about bears. This is important, and we need to set the record straight about bears. One myth that's been circulating for years is that bears can't run downhill. This is completely false. Bears are incredibly agile creatures that can indeed run downhill very quickly. Trying to outrun a bear on a downhill slope could very well end in disaster. Another myth is that playing dead is the best course of action when you encounter a bear. The truth is, this really depends on the type of bear and the situation. Playing dead might work with a mother grizzly defending her cubs, but it could be a fatal mistake with a black bear. Each bear encounter is unique and requires a different approach. Myth number one, survival shows for survival tips. Think survival shows taught you everything you need to know about staying alive? Think again. While survival shows can be entertaining and even educational at times, they're often designed more for entertainment than practical survival. They might show you how to build a makeshift raft out of palm leaves. But the reality of survival is often far less glamorous and more about making smart, practical decisions. So, while you might pick up a few tips from survival shows, don't rely on them as your sole source of survival knowledge. So this begs the question, where do you learn survival tips from then? Well, right here from TBTV, your go-to source for reliable and actionable tips and advice. Click the video on screen now to learn more about seven mistakes you should avoid at all costs during emergency situations.